Hi there, so for today's software demo, we are in FRED, the ray tracing software, and I'll be teaching you how to specify the rays that are gonna be viewed by your detector in the system or your analysis surface. In addition to that, I will show you kind of how to use the advanced ray trace to output ray reports and isolate a ray path you want to view, and then only trace rays that are following that specified ray path. Um, the reason for this is, I've mentioned before, this is a Cassegrain telescope system for a cube satellite. And we have a small LED source here. And in front of the LED source is a scatter plane, um, which will send, it kind of behaves as a model for a TIR optic. And then we have a primary mirror that has a flawed surface with a scatter plane, which will then scatter the rays again, send it to the secondary, then through the baffles to the detector. So. The thing is, I only want to view Razor incident on the detector from the flawed ray path. So to do this, I'm going to go in here. As you can see, there's this section here. So I'm gonna hit append. What we did is I went in and under ray selection, like I mentioned, there are two scatter planes, the one behaving as the hybrid optic and the one from the flaw. So if I only want to see rays that are from the flaw, those rays will have a scatter ancestry, ancestry equal to two. So hit two, insert there, and click OK. I already have it inserted here on the detector plane, so I'm gonna hit apply. I'll close up that. You can go to geometry, and under this um, imported system, I have the detector as a surface. So I'm gonna drag the analysis surface, which is now sampling not only rays on the detector, but only rays that have the scatter ancestry equal to two. Because of this, only the rays in theory would be that scatter initially at the LED, then scatter at the flaw. In addition to that, I'm going to just ensure that by defining a ray path. First, where I'm gonna start is just inspect where the rays are going. I'm gonna use the normal non-sequential hierarchical search but I'm going to not worry about drawing the rays at this point, but I do want to have a ray history file and determine the ray paths. These are the big important parts. So I'm gonna apply and trace. I'm only using a subset of the rays for this demo. I don't wanna spend a ton of time. Usually it'll trace nearly um, 10 million rays, but in this case, we didn't do that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to tools and reports. And I'm going to analyze the ray trace paths. I'm gonna pull this all the way up here. I'm gonna pull this out. And then I'm gonna double click this so it goes in order. So what we're looking for is the last surface is the detector. So there's just one ray path, okay. So I want to redraw, no, I'm gonna actually output path details. I'm gonna minimize this and then in this little window here at the bottom, we'll be able to see, let me pull it up for you here, what's happening. So on the bottom here, hopefully you can see this, let me pull it up more. We have going from the source, then scattering off the plane, hitting the defect, hitting the secondary, hitting the window, hitting the back of the window and going to the texture. So this is a ray path that we are interested in. So I'm gonna go back to this ray path summary. I'm gonna right click here on the 16. I'm going to say copy to user to find a list. Another thing you can do if you wanna just double check, redraw ray history. That'll draw only the rays moving through there. So you can see from the plane, scatter, mirror defect, secondary, through the baffles to the um, detector plane after going through the window. So as I mentioned right there, one more time I'm gonna show you. Right click copy to user defined path list. I'm gonna minimize that again. And then on here, let me click out and go back in. Advanced ray trace, sequential using a user defined path. Here we go. Here is a trace path. That is the copy to the clipboard. We have this and I'm not worried about drawing it, but I do still want to have the ray paths in the history file. This will only trace the rays following this path, okay? So I'm gonna go into here. I'm gonna just trace a couple more rays. I think I mentioned I have the ray set sampled to a smaller subset. So I'm gonna go say 500,000. I don't wanna trace all of them just for sake of time of this demo. I'm gonna apply that. 
and exit out. So I'm gonna hit apply and trace. You can see on the bottom on this very low window, you're gonna be able to see what's going on. It's gonna trace about five million rays, more or less, just under four hundred fifty four million five hundred thousand. But we're going through the ray trace, finishing up down here. And now it should be done. Cool. So what we're gonna check, I wanna see if I'm getting that ray path on the detector. So I'm going up here, a radiant spread function. And what I'm going to do now, now we have this. I'm gonna get in the perspective view and I'll pull it up. As you can see, I need to trace more rays to have a more uniform distribution. But the good thing is now we are only seeing rays that are coming from that flawed mirror. So this this is a great way for analysis in this project that I've been doing. I'm using this val these values, the irradiance counts, to pretty much compare it to the noise floor of the detector, to compare to see if this flaw is being detected by this detector or not. So essentially, everything we're seeing right here on this plane, on this detector, is coming from the flaw. In if you compare this to just a normal ray trace by tracing all these rays coming from the LED, you wouldn't know what's really coming from the flaw or what isn't. So what you could do to do that is place a source at the flaw and only trace rays from there, but this is another way to do it, to really just sample and specify that ray path. So I hope this was instructed, instruct, instructive, and I hope you're able to use it in your upcoming projects. So thank you.